Welcome back guys, Automotive Inc. here. So we are going to go over some of the main differences between the 2024 F-150 and should you get one versus a 2023. Well, all in all guys, there are some, I guess one major change, a uh, couple cool things that may have interest to a lot of people and some may think that it's really not that big of a change. So, you know, go ahead and snag one of those smoking deals on one of the 2023s. So Ford has announced that one of the biggest things is, is 4x4 will now be standard, I think, on every trim above an XL. Um, and it looks like this year they're also going to now separate the STX package from the XL trim and make it a standalone model. So, I mean, that's kind of cool, I guess, in its own sense. I guess it gives us more options there. Ford has also dropped the standard engine, which was, mm, it was a good engine, but it was very unamusing and it wasn't all that powerful and it wasn't very all that good on fuel economy the new standard engine will be the 2.7 uh, eco boost and frankly i've had one of those guys it's the only one in the entire lineup that has a cast iron block and really it's a good engine uh it's good on fuel economy it's super powerful and over the last one it, that's a welcome upgrade so we cruise over here, guys. All of this information is derived from Ford.com. I'm putting it in video format for you guys to check it out. If you do go to the F-150 page for 2024, you can see a really cool video. Um, kind of see some of that in, in use. However, it's going to be more of those up trim models. So again, in the XL trim, they are going to basically be the only ones that has two-wheel drive. But for most people, four-wheel drive is going to be the option. But you know, for the work truck uh, companies that are buying these, by the dozens than it does. So we can see that this is a mid-cycle refresh, so it is not an all new redesign of anything. No big major changes to the frame, um, no big changes to really anything else other than that dropping of that engine. And in the inside, the biggest upgrade will be the standard 12 inch screen on every model. So how that's going to connect with the SYNC 4 and how that's going to be if they're going to be synonymous across there or if the base XL with the 12-inch productivity screen will be changed. Now as we go through here, guys, you can see the XL. We just have a uh, – it's a, the XL has always been a fine truck for the work truck class. Here's the STX so you can kind of see it goes from steel wheels. We get a little bit flashier uh, – you know, grill, if you will. Um, but, you know, to be honest with you, I kind of like the XL grill, always have. Uh, STX, we cruise up to the XLT. This is my favorite trim when it comes to Ford guys in regards to, you know, just the overall quality bang for buck. Like I said the other day, I was jokingly saying, uh, uh, one of the watchers kind of commented that, you know, the XL trim, uh, XLT trim is an excellent um, trim, but I, they thought maybe I was knocking. I'm not. Actually, when I uh, introduced the general, the 7.3 XLT uh, Godzilla truck, so many people banged on me saying that how dare I basically flaunt an XLT like it's some piece of trash. For me, it's a good fit. It's a good quality. And I think that this grill is really good looking, guys. As we cruise over here, Lariat, um, that's when you, all your chrome comes in, but they'll have a variant package for that. Uh, this year, they did drop the limited trim and now have a platinum plus trim. So we have the good old classic King, uh, King Ranch trim. Um, and then we have our platinum, which I think is probably the best looking like street truck you can get. Um, and then you see we have the trimmer. Uh, again, this is for the off-road guys. Uh, and then we have the Raptor. So, you know, at the end of the day... Those biggest changes are pretty cool. If we go back here to the XLT, again, being that if this was a side profile, guys, it's basically the same side profile as normal. We have a little bit different changes of wheels. Same mirrors as last year. We have grill changes, headlight changes, moderate changes to the front bumper, and then, of course, the taillights. Now, you guys can comment below what you think of the big changes there. Again, um, really nothing crazy. When it comes to the interior, guys, they just added some uh, different type of plastics around the actual like stereo um, and around the gauges themselves, the door panels. Everything's staying the same in that regard. One good addition, too, is Ford's Blue Cruise will be available in the XLT and above. It is a package-based thing, guys. And keep in mind, Blue Cruise is basically a semi-autonomous type driving um, feature. It is subscription-based. So the costs associated with that, some of you guys that currently have that in your 23, you can chime in. The 23, they did delete it in a lot of um, vehicles. It was basically a credit back to the consumer. Um, but if you guys have it, maybe you can chime in on how much that subscription is. Again, if you're going to have the feature, you might as well pay for it. One thing I will tell you is uh, the um, 
and it, they may be able to tie it in with the connected navigation. So Ford uses a, connect, uh, a factory navigation, and then they uh, offer a connected navigation. The connected navigation is basically also a subscription-based. It's $80 a year. You do get it free for the first year, roughly, if I remember right. On my 20th, I think I had it for a year. Um, so you will get that on this 12 inch screen and what that allows you to do is have all the features and benefits of gas station, Yelp reviews, telephone numbers, everything like that instantaneous. It is really good because the maps are always up to date. If you guys remember back in the day, we always had to pay for updates on maps. Um, and sometimes that was like $600 every couple of years. So really 80 bucks a year times that by six, you'd be talking $480 over that time of time period. So in all reality, we all know roads change probably quicker than six years. So to have updated maps, updated business information, motels and stuff like that, I think that is fantastic. But when it comes down to the Blue Cruise, again, subscription-based, and so the feature won't work if you don't pay for it, but your truck could have it. So I guess you could turn it off and turn it off as you like. So, so if we cruise over here to, again, the Ford video guys, you can see that these gauges are slightly different than, than what they're in the Super Duty. But again, we have the same steering wheel that Super Duty's getting. We have everything like that. They did go ahead and fill in this piece. This used to be dipped down. And in the Ford or the Super Duty, this is a little bit more bulky over here. But yeah, they cut this down, added a different trim here, um, everything like that. But for the most part, guys, that is all going to stay the same. So here is a platinum trim. We got the new headlights. Again, you guys can chime in if you think those are big or, or better or anything different than what 23 had to offer. Um, again, this chrome stack right here wouldn't be for me. I would want a little bit more subdued stuff. The new taillights are pretty fantastic when it comes to the brightness and just overall look. Again, not a drastic change. So again, when you think of, is this all going to be worth it? I don't necessarily know. And basically how it works is there is a partition kind of in the middle of the tailgate, like the Rams is like an 80-20 split, and they both swing out like barn doors. Well, if you guys remember back in the day, they had barn door style um, doors on Suburbans and excursions and whatnot, and a lot of people complained about that because the room it always took to open those, um, but some people liked them better than the tailgate that came down and the glass that went up. Well, here we are with these tailgates, and... I haven't experienced it uh, necessarily, and I and I think if I'm understanding right, you still get the step in that tailgate, which that would have to be a, a super lightly made tailgate, or with all of that complexity, it would have to be heavier than I'll get out. Uh, but this one actually swings. It's like a 20, probably a 20, 40, 20, and in the, the middle, the 40% swings out. Now, they say that the advantage to that is, is once you hook a trailer up, yeah, again, so they're saying that you can open that. Well, most jacks sit pretty high. So, again, I I see maybe the potential where that would be a gain. Um, but if it's half the tailgate or more than half the tailgate in size swinging out, you're going to have – it's going to be a long piece of metal. I don't know. It would be really interesting to see. The Ram one's not for me. I do like the uh, the Multiflex one just because it comes down in little pieces. But then, again, it also has its downfall when it comes to um, – how that one sometimes also can bump the, the 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 receiver hitch if it's in the actual hitch. So mm, I don't know. I, I guess it's it's a uh, it's another tool in the toolbox. And I think some people are gonna love it, and some people are gonna think it's kind of janky or weird. Uh, for me, I, I'll rather just keep the regular tailgate with the step in it. For me, um, I don't do a lot of conventional towing where I have to worry about opening the tailgate, uh, and even at that. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't see that uh, as being a big option for me, but that is a new thing from Ford itself. So you guys will probably want to know real quick, the uh, max tow for this year on the F-150 will be 13,500 pounds. That is going to be on a Super Cruise 6.5 foot box, 4x4 with the 3.5 twin turbo. Again, the Power Boost and the 3.5 are now kind of the leaders in the towing segment for the F-150. Uh, but the regular standard uh, 3.5 is going to tow just a little bit more than the power boost because the power boost loses some tow capacity because of the weight of the batteries. Uh, but the old Coyote is no longer the tow king for Ford. Uh, so that's not too bad that you can still get a 4x4 Super Crew with a little bit longer bed. Although that's probably going to be a majority of uh, special orders because dealers like to order the baby box. 
but we will re reiterate here. So we have the 270 EcoBoost as the new standard engine. The 5.0 Coyote is still available. The 3.5 EcoBoost V6. We have the 3.5 Power Boost full hybrid. We then have the 3.5 twin turbo high output EcoBoost, which is only available on Raptors, so keep that in mind. So po the Power Boost is the most powerful at 430 and 570. Again, the original Godzilla was 430 and 475, so kind of a beast there. And then you can still get a 5.2 supercharged in Raptor form only. Ford has been good about offering their um, their Pro Power onboard. That is available on XLT models and higher. They will still carry over the standard things like Pro Trailer Backup Assist. That is kind of a unique feature. Again, that does take a little bit more than just using it like a video game. There is some setup to it. I have found that the Ford trailering app stuff is actually pretty good. Uh, I did like the uh, the Chevy um, version of how that set up. The Ram was kind of unique. I didn't really feel like that worked as well as it should have um, when we towed with it. And I played with it and just couldn't get, to get any better. Um, but yeah, so you're going to basically have a suite of all kinds of good stuff, guys. Uh, again, the, the base MSRPs did go up slightly from last year. And that's going to be what happens. And now that the um, the workers are getting more pay, then eventually at some point that cost is going to be spread out to the consumer. We all know that uh, big wigs are not going to give up their paychecks. Um, so that will be passed down in what respects we don't know. Uh, maybe it's going to be less rebates over the future. I, I don't really even know how that's going to work, but it will come down to that. Um, but yeah, so the base MSRPs did go up slightly, but again, that's, that's not too out of the park from where it was last year. And, uh, so you can take that for what it's worth. So now that we've actually taken a moment, just kind of talk about the things that are going to be different this year. Would I want to wait for a 24? Well, if money is no option, then having the newest cool thing on the block is neat. However, you got to like the new look, the new cues. I mean, um, Ford's good about refreshing their models every few years, um, and, um, so I think it keeps things lively. They, they seem to like to change it off years from what Ram and, uh, Chevy have been doing. Now Ram did just introduce what the new 2025 Ram 1500 is going to look like. I'll do a video on that. And then once the car show gets back to Denver, we'll be able to put up a lot more like one up stuff, but there are some people that have traveled out to, um, other parts of the country to earlier, um, auto shows and have checked that out. Again, I'm not too keen on what Ram's new 1500 looks like. I kind of like the other one better. But uh, uh, when it comes to the Ford right now, uh, I'll put a link in the description when it comes to a video I made on current deals. I think there are very appealing uh, reasons to go with the 23, keeping in mind that between dealers kind of doing what they were doing and everything like that, now they have a plethora of F-150s. Because there's not a disparaging difference in what the interior looks like, and if you can find one of the tons of different packages of models that they had in 23, again, they're slimming that down a little bit like package-wise. They're getting away from the black package and just making it like a sport appearance package because they're almost one and the same. But there's so many options for 23 along with the great incentives and the good APRs from Ford Motor Credit, which you'll have to be approved for. I don't see a reason to want to spring for a 24 if money is important to you because nothing else really has been updated too much in there. And when you can get, say, anywhere between six and $12,000 off a 23 F-150, I think it's a good buy. Again, when I said stay away from the 23 Super Duty, it's because that was a whole new refresh, X tier and N tier. And so... I think it needs a couple years to pan out. The F-150, this version has been around a couple years now. I think they got it figured out. I think it's good. Um, and I, I think it's it's a nice um, shot. And if you watched the video where I introduced Captain the other day, I got to admit, guys, I am loving this little truck. Uh, I think it's fantastic. I can't wait to tow with it again. I wish it had the ability to tow my fifth wheels. It just doesn't. But it does give me the feeling of what the Super Duty could be here in a couple of years if they can get everything ironed out. And I know there's a lot of guys that had great looks for Super Duty, but uh, this this little truck is just so fantastic. And we'll do a follow-up video on fuel economy. We're currently right now, driving an Eco and everything like that, my truck is getting 31 miles a gallon. Well, it's 30.54, so I ran it up to 31. So just say 30 and a half, whatever. In town, um, I don't know. It, it's kind of, uh, it, it tickles me. And then when, when you don't want it to have it, you can just have 430 horsepower right at your disposal. So 
for me, guys, I would say swing for a 23, but then again, um, we all got to do what we got to do. And I know there'll be some people that are, are hoping for the 2025 Ram, and we'll just have to see how that plays out. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that is the main differences between the 2024. Again, guys, you can head over to Ford.com, go to the 2024 link for the F-150, and check out their cool videos and some of the stuff we looked over. And you currently can go to the build and price model to build out an F-150. However, the availability may be a little bit later, so the order process may take longer than you anticipated. But if time isn't a big concern for you and you have to go 24 over 23, then I say go for it. If not... Look around, call some of your dealers. Some of them will be very transparent and show those discounts on the screen, but there are a lot of them. Uh, Larry Miller here in Lakewood, Colorado is having great discounts on their F-150s, but every lot is piling up with F-150s. If you're in the need of Super Duty, some of those are piling up because those still are being marked up by some of those dealers. So again, look it out, guys, and uh, let me know what you think of some of those changes. Comment below, smash the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. We'll see you on the next one.